885XPN2. My name is Eric Schumann, and I'm really excited to be joined by uh, two members of the Horrors. we got uh, Ferris and uh, Reese. Welcome. Hello. You guys. Good afternoon. Hi. It is great to have you. Uh, your new album uh, is called Skying. came out earlier this year, and uh, third LP overall, and what a terrific record this is. Uh, and I understand that uh, you built your own studio to, to create this. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Pretty much. Um, we we set we started looking for space basically at the beginning of last year, which we found it was actually quite problematic. Um, so it took us a couple of months to actually locate a space that would work for us. Um, we've just taken over an old cotton factory. Actually, it's like a load-in bay, literally like a, a, a massive large room. Basically, we've now filled with all of our gear, so it's just piled high with synthesizers and drum machines and everything else that we have to make noise with. <laughs> and how how was recording? this album in in your own studio and kind of on your on your own time uh, what, what what sort of liberties did that grant you that maybe you didn't have on the on the last two well it's great because i think we really work best when we are playing together and writing together as a as a group so just to be able to get your ideas down and as you say just have the time to do exactly what you want to explore a certain sound be that a guitar sound or a synthesizer sound um just to be able to do exactly what you wanted to do and when you wanted to do it. And I think really when we've worked previously, we've always had quite a relaxed approach in the studio environment, but I think it just felt really important for us to just do it ourselves this time. It kind of felt like we really needed and wanted to do it. And also felt kind of, you know, like it was, we had all of the ideas we needed anyway, so it's just like, yeah, let's just get on with it, really. The, uh, the evolution and watching you guys transform on record uh, over the years has been really really uh, unusual because you don't usually get to have a document of a band in their earliest years and and to kind of watch them watch them grow and mm. and, uh, and progress from album to album um between primary colors and and this was there anything was there any one thing in particular that kind of led to the way that skying sounds i don't hear them as being too completely different in sound or at least in um attack almost i think it's with primary colors it was us as a band really finding what what we enjoyed doing and, and what the individuals did best and the sounds we wanted to create and the mood we wanted to create with the music i think we really kind of found ourselves as a band anyway you know we really knew what we wanted to do so for me it's kind of like a continuation from that space and of course we always wanted to to explore new areas and try new things so for, for me it's just that natural kind of step forward really Strangely, I think, you know, a lot of bands, that's the way it went, you know, a band starts off playing beat or, you know, yeah. whatever comes first, punk, rock and roll, you know, that's kind of why we started, because it was just about energy, and intensity and volume and, you know, and distortion and then it just kind of, when you're, you know, getting a band together, that's the thing you want to do, really, I think, when you first start playing. And, um, and I don't think it happens so much now, but I mean, you know, if you look at bands over the years um that idea of developing and kind of working on your sound and the band progressing and transforming over a three album kind of stage or whatever it's like you know that used to happen all the time that's almost was almost expected i guess and it's strange how now it's kind of we always ask that you know everyone always says wow it's such a fantastic thing to see this progression to us it just seems like a really natural thing to do well it's it's funny that you mentioned that because if you do go back and look at third albums by any number of bands it's often one of their best in in their catalog mm. um and that's a trend that is uh, it uncannily holds up i mean if you just look at a band that, that put out three albums it's usually their third one that either yeah. got them the most attention or, or had found them exploring really different things from their from their previous ones uh and i think that this one is the the best that you guys have done yet yeah i think it's exciting for us you know just to um to be to be changing as a group and playing together and and to be just seeing that happen as a band as well you know i think it's quite it's quite exciting i'm glad we didn't just start with a record that we've been working on for like you know 10 years or something or this masterpiece i think the first record was a fantastic one but i just think it's also really exciting just to kind of keep on moving you know I don't think you really develop unless you actually put stuff out there. It's sort of, you know, if you just make it for yourself, you don't really, there's like, there's a certain level that you don't reach. Talking with Ferris and uh, Reese from The Horrors, and uh, the new album is called Skying. In fact, you're set up with uh, the rest of your band in our World Cafe Performance Studio. Uh, what song are we going to hear first? Um, the first song uh, will be Changing the Rain. <laughs>
the horrors performing live for us here at XPN2. And uh, joining me, uh, Faris and, uh, and Reese. Uh, could you introduce the, uh, the rest of your band? Um, there's Tom on synths and Joe playing the drums and Joshua playing guitar. There's a bit of a, uh, a musical family that's kind of developing from the horrors. Uh, and in fact, uh, Reese, your, your brother has, has started his, yeah. own, his own group. Uh, called Scum that was Scum. just kind of uh, crossing over here in the states. Uh, also, was it, it uh, Tom's, Tom's brother? Tom's brothers in, in the vaccines. Yeah. Um, do do all of you guys come from musical families or artistic families? Strangely, none of our parents are particularly musical. I think um, none of them were. Well, my mum was in a, a band called the Dalmatians, which I think just played a few local shows in pubs when she was a teenager, but I don't think anyone really took it. Was she a singer? She was a singer, yeah. yeah. And my dad likes to think of himself as being in a band, but he never was. It's just <laughs> one of those things he likes to tell people. But strangely, <laughs> no, I think... Um, none of, I mean, I thought parents are li- in- interested in music, but not to the same the same level of us, so it's quite strange, really, because Faris's brother plays in a like, band as well. It's hard to meet, I don't know, 70s parents or whatever, like 60s parents that weren't into music at, at all. Mm. They might have been into music, just not making it on a professional yeah. level. Yeah. Well, well, in that case, I mean, none of our families are from a, you know, have any sort of tradition of making music. Josh's sister's not in a band yet. Though, that's <laughs> no, not no, yet. No. <laughs> Maybe she'll end up in one of the uh, the number of side projects that uh, you guys are involved Maybe. in. Maybe. Yeah, um, I hope so. She'll be a new happy bunny. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of those side projects um, that uh, Ferris, you're involved in called uh, Cat's Eyes, really cool group that put out uh, an album earlier this year. Can you tell me about how, how you formed that group and what sort of direction or what sort of uh, things you're, you're going on with that? Well, Rachel and I were writing songs for a while and then we, um, we, we sort of, we had about 20 songs and we decided that, you know, we'd sort of been writing without any thoughts of what was going to end up with them. Um, and then, yeah, we had a lot of songs that we really liked and it, it would have been such a waste not to finish them and, you know, take them into the studio. So that's what we did. Does juggling multiple projects at, at one time, does that come naturally to you, or is it something that um, was, was new? Yeah, I mean, I suppose if I was in, you know, if, you, if, if someone were to try and be in two bands that were touring all the time, then yeah. it would be a nightmare, but, but I'm not. <laughs> you make it very easy on yourself. <laughs> yeah. Talking with Farris and Reese from The Horrors, uh, the new album is called Skying. Uh, what song are we going to hear next? The next track is called I Can See Through You.
I can see through you. Another one from our guest today, the horrors here at XPN2. Um, having never been to England, I've never been to England mm. yet. Yet. It's a fantastic place. This is what I've heard. <laughs> mm. The UK music press is something that, having spent my, my life in America and, and indeed steeped in the way that American media covers music, the UK music press is just a completely different world to, to us. And when we, yeah. when we read about bands, like the bands that are popular and the bands that do get a lot of press attention in the UK, they get as much attention as the bands that are popular here, but the sounds of the bands are very, very different. Do, do you find that being in different countries, that the way that music is covered in those countries affects how your tours go or just how you uh, operate? What, what do you mean? Well, do you... Do you, you, mean, the, you mean the kind of <coughs> bands that are popular in England are different to the kind that are popular here? I remember a friend of mine came back from England. She said that there were posters for, like, LaRue and Mumford & Sons before they had really hit it big here. Mm all over the place and really the only things that you would see plastered posters everywhere would be either hip-hop groups or like the big pop sensations i mean they are english groups they are british groups i mean it sort of makes sense that they would get big in the i mean the well, i mean the, I the, guess sti it's the styles of music like a, yeah, but a band that had a, a banjo in it probably wouldn't be at the top of american charts no. Unless they were something... It's to do with youth, isn't it? Youth and youth culture, and in England, we've always been interested in rock and roll, and I think over here for the last 20 years, uh, your top 100 has been full of pop, dance, and hip-hop acts, and uh, rock and roll itself is completely uh, underground, even on, in the mainstream, almost, or viewed as such, and uh, young those. people don't, you know, you only want to po put posters up to sell something, and if maybe they're not going to buy it, then they're not going to spend their money on the posters. That's my answer. But, uh, but LaRue is pop, though, isn't she? Yeah, but you're, you know, you, you didn't see massive posters of LaRue everywhere. I don't know. Well, I mean, I mean obviously, there's, a a there's obviously an audience to listen to, yeah. all, all kinds of music, but I um, don't know. I mean, another way to look at it is, I remember when, last year, when the Arcade Fire won their, their Grammy for mm. the suburbs, all over the news in, on the major American networks, there were people asking, who, who the heck, are who they, the heck yeah. is this band Arcade Fire? And like... To me, I'm thinking, you know, I've known the Arcade Fire since the early 2000s, and mm. like, how, how come nobody else knows about them? But, uh, the I mean, was, your country is a lot bigger than ours. That's true. That's also a very good point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talking with uh, Reese and Ferris from The Horrors, uh, what song are we going to hear next? You are now going to hear a song, Endless Blue. Yeah, that one.
Endless Blue, another one from our guest today, The Horrors. Joining me in the studio is uh, Faris and uh, Reese from the band here at XPN2. When you revisit older material, and I always, I always like to ask this of, of bands that, uh, that do progress from mm. album to album or just over the years, when you're performing live, uh, do you rearrange some of your older material to, to fit into the new sound? Mm, strangely, our, our playing of songs evolve on stage anyway, so we don't ever work on different arrangements, but even the new record and Primary Colours, people often say, wow, they sound not completely different, but oh, nice to hear, you know, uh, uh, some weird bits and pieces going on or whatever. We just kind of, we don't talk about it, but the songs do kind of shape shift a little. Um, but w as far as Strange House goes, I think if people want to hear those songs, they don't want to really hear reworked versions. And it's like, Faris and I were talking about it the other day, it's kind of like, if you look at kind of Bowie concerts from the 70s or 80s, it's like you, you never hear like a straight kind of version of any of his older material. And to be honest, you don't really want to listen to the kind of choir backed kind of <laughs> like crooned version of like whatever suffragette city just like the velvet underground or the velvet yeah. underground and i mean yeah that's what we were talking about the velvet underground like basically never well after the 60s i guess you know even in the by the 70s when they did ever play together they didn't ever do straight up renditions of like waiting for the man and i know that's fair enough it's artistic like you know do what you want but at the same time i think as a listener you just want to hear the song you like so i think when we to play strange house stuff we would keep it quite as it was are there things that you're coming about uh, exploring when you do kind of tweak things for for concerts um that you think might inspire the the next album or is it just you're going to wait and see how it how it comes out I, th I don't think we ever think or plan anything, you know, we don't really, th I mean, you know, when we're, the songs change quite a lot when we're rehearsing them, just naturally, you know, that's what makes songs good live, you know, the fact that, you know, they, they adapt a little bit to that environment, it's uh, as simple as that. I don't know, I don't agree, I, th I still, uh, I, I think, although we haven't written any new material or um, been experimenting with it I also feel that there's kind of an unspoken mood or enthusiasm or excitement of a what might happen next I personally feel that anyway yeah, but none of those I mean none of those points you've made a sort of you know I'm I'm disagreeing with I think no. I just think when you're <laughs> rehearsing it you know when you're rehearsing your songs but that wasn't really the answer to the question because the no, question was, what was have the you question? thought about working uh, how the new album might sound as in the next record when we've been playing in sound rehearsals or trying you know for example, messing around with a track, has it sparked a conversation or any thought process about how we might attack the next record? I mean, but everything, I mean, everything sparks those thoughts, you know, like listening to other people's music in the, in the bus sparks those thoughts. Mm. So the answer is yes, then? Well, I guess the answer is yes to your question. <laughs> <laughs> well, well what, have, what have you been listening to uh, recently in the bus? Uh, well, th this morning we were listening to David Bowie. The, the BB at live the, at the BBC? Yeah, mm -hmm. I know those ones. Uh, we've been listening to Death actually. Oh uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Black Murder as well. Mm -hmm. From I think they're from Detroit. I know Death are from Detroit. Been Black really Sabbath. enjoying that. A lot of Black Sabbath <laughs> <laughs> and Sleep as well. Um, but then you know, all, all sorts of things really. Talking with uh, Ferris and Reese from the Horrors. Thank you guys so much for uh, for hanging out with me today. This is a lot of fun. Cheers. What uh, what song are we going to go out with? Last song. It's still life. Still Life, this is one that uh, our listeners will be quite familiar with. It's uh, the horrors performing live for us. We'll be back in a minute here at XPN2.